Ba ba da ba ba. Good morning. Here I am. Hello, everybody. I or people. I am. Um, uh, I thought I'd try this out. I'm in my workshop. It's a Friday morning. I have my, my tea and uh, I'm going to tidy up <laughs> and answer uh, uh, answer questions that, that I, I get. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that you love what I do. Um, so I'm going to tidy up and kind of ramble. I haven't done this before. Uh, so if you can uh, have any ideas for how I should tighten this up, I don't want to be too kind of too perfect or too good uh, because I don't have the energy for that. But yeah, I'm going to tidy up whilst uh, answering uh, some questions. So if you have any questions that you uh, that you you have for me, then put them in the comments. Do you take milk? I do take milk, milk, Carl. You know I do. The sweet, 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 one drop of milk. I take a in in coffee. I take uh, I take it how it comes. But uh, in, uh, in in tea, I drink. You know, I'm, I'm English. I have to drink uh, milk in my tea. But yeah, no, I had to um, tidy up a second, and yeah. So, uh, thank you very much for, for joining the live stream. And uh, I am now gonna get to answering some questions. So when I posted that I was doing this, I uh, uh, had a ton of questions about pickups, and um, like how I make them, and what I do, and why I uh, kind of why I decided to start making my own and, you know, not just buying, um, uh, you know, standard off the, the, the shelf pickups. And there are a number of reasons. Um, so uh, first up is that uh, when you're making your own pickups, first of all, I'm making my own guitars. Everything's totally custom. Um, it didn't really make that much sense to me to just, uh, I kind of wanted to have more control. Um, so on a, uh, on a commission, uh, it was really a, a bit of a drag to be communicating with the customer and then the customer, you know, we, we talk about the woods and uh, how it's going to play and the hardware and the sort of sound they're after. And then uh, having to, for me to be uh, like a middleman going to the pickup winder, that was really, really a drag. So I kind of wanted to, to, to cut that out a little bit and then actually me have a lot more control. And when a customer says, can you give me this type of tone? I actually know the answer straight away rather than having to ask someone that's finding pickups. Um, that was kind of one of the reasons why I started. Also cost actually, it costs, um, pickup parts are not that expensive. And if you're trying to run a business, then um, uh, making your own pickups is, is, is definitely, you know, of course it takes a while to learn. And my first, I don't know, six months or no, less than that. First, maybe four months of trying were, uh, were a drag. And actually my, um, my old apprentices uh, used to say that I didn't do pickup winding, I did pickup whining because I guess whined the whole time when I was making pickups because the wire would snap, for example, when you first started up. But um, with time, it got better. And then uh, now actually, as uh, after a few years of, of doing, a, like, actually last year, I think every guitar I made had my own pickups. And this year also every guitar I made has uh, been with my own pickups. Um, I, uh, I really like the, the, the control that I have. I think they actually sound pretty good. And I, I care a lot more. Like. Um, I, I care more how they sound than, uh, you know, if I was to go to Seymour Duncan and buy, buy some antiquities. Like, uh, it's my name on the line. And uh, I also have a better understanding of what the customer probably wants because I've been talking a lot with, with them about, about their sort of sound. But then what's really been fun with uh, how many prototypes did it take to learn? Um, I made a few duff pickups. I made a few bad ones. And then uh, it... But then when you get it right, it kind of just works. Like, it's like... Um, you they're really simple pickups uh the thing when you're hand winding the tricky thing actually is not snapping the wire the wire is incredibly thin um it's like a you know thinner than your hair uh so when you're winding often you can get uh you actually your as the wire is going through your finger and you're putting it onto the the, the bobbin your finger the, the skin actually dries out uh, or it does me anyway uh and that can cause um the wire to snap the you out uh and then anyway, as, as the wire's going through your fingers, uh, your fingers can dry out and the wire can snap. A good way of getting around that actually is just putting a bit of talcum powder. How many, have you made any for myself? Uh, no, no, I made, actually, 
Okay, one and a half. Um, I made uh, the first guitar I made um, is actually it's upstairs in my in my workshop. It never got finished uh, because it was crap. Uh, <laughs> it was really not very good. And then uh, I made another one. Um, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. I made another one uh, as like my, my, my second, and then that uh, actually kind of started the business. I made that, and then somebody wrote me a stranger saying, hey, can I make, can I, can I buy something based on this other thing that you made? And I've been going since then. So I kind of, I, I do have two, or one guitar of mine that's strung up, the other one is, is never gonna be finished. But I don't own like a Wayfair or like a nice guitar. Um, I always have some guitars in the shop, or almost always have some guitars in the shop. So I can always play a little bit, but um, yeah, but no, I haven't really made myself any. Uh, I'm a madman making, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I so some of them it really hurts to uh, to ship them off. I feel um, I have I've had a few. Of course, you know I I got to make a living. If I don't ship them, then I guess I have a bunch of nice guitars but no food. Um, so yeah, I like I, it is very like yeah. I I I have to earn a living and pay you know pay to to have the workshop and have my house and keep my family fed. But it's um. But yeah, there've been a few that have been tricky. I, I like, actually yesterday, uh, funnily enough, yesterday was the first time I went through the uh, the guitar kind of quote builder on my website and specced out what I would do if I was gonna do it for myself. And um, maybe one day, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I have a few commissions this year, or I have actually a commission coming up, um, should be kind of, something should be happening with it kind of soon. Uh, and it's an eight string um, baritone but made like the GT, GT8, is that the, the Taylor guitar where it has the two middle strings uh, doubled up like a 12 string and the rest of the strings are regular. So it's, it's like a six string, but with, <laughs> but with uh, two X strings in the middle. And that, uh, I kind of want to make a, a Wayfair uh, of, around that, um, maybe for myself or for stock, but, but yeah, we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, back to the pickups. I'll talk about pickups before I got sidetracked. I'm good at getting sidetracked. Um, I, uh, so I started off just kind of for, for ease, for me not having to rely on a third company shipping me stuff and, you know, it happened a few times where stuff got lost in the post. Actually, it happened a few, twice where pickups got lost in the post. Some really nice um, uh, McNelly. If you know McNelly uh, in Canada? Super cool guy. Wines amazing pickups. And... Uh, yeah, he made me some bass pickups in a P90 case, and they got lost in the mail. Uh, and then he actually made me some other. So that type of thing sucks. So I uh, I started making my own. But then actually, with time and with getting better and making a bunch of pickups, and obviously I do this full time. I don't uh, have to, you know, this is my job. So I have a lot of time to practice making pickups because I, you know, and they have to, they kind of have to work. Uh, otherwise, I don't, don't earn a living. Um, I kind of quickly realized that it's possible to, to you know, customize everything. You know, the, the wire, the magnets, the, the strength, the output, the, you know, where they are. Also, because I'm actually making my guitars myself, I can, um, I can set up and I can build the guitar with a setup in mind, specifically for a pickup, rather than having it to be kind of everything being kind of vanilla in terms of the setup. I, if I know, for example, that the, there'll be really, really low output, uh, the, the, the pickups, and maybe they'll have kind of weaker magnets, I can do the, the the pickup route a little bit less deep than it would be because the pickup can be closer to the strings. Whereas, for example, if somebody had some really strong neo magnets that would have a lot of pull on the strings, I know that I would need to route a deeper uh, section on the body. So it's, it's just kind of more control. But then I uh, I've actually been the past maybe six months been thinking about uh, uh, my own uh, kind of pickup standards. Um, so I am going to go away from the traditional, you know, it's all like kind of variations on a theme, right? You have, you know, single coil, you know, strap, basically, a telly, and then humbuckers and P90s, and there's filtertrons and mini humbuckers and stuff. But everything's kind of variations on a theme, and everything fits inside. I'll come back to that in a minute. And uh, I'm going off on my own way. Like, I, there's no reason why I need to stick to the, the same shape as everybody else, my pickups. Um, and making the guitars they're going into. So I'm actually starting to, to experiment with um, different kind of forms and um, and the new sounds that can get. So any interesting woods that I haven't worked with yet that I'd like to. I uh, I haven't made a maple bodied guitar. Um, 
uh, I would really like to um, make a roasted maple uh, wayfair. Uh, it's just never happened. Um, getting a chunk of maple that big is a little bit difficult. And uh, mm. hang on, somebody's calling me. Mm. I can talk to them later. Um, so yeah, I'd like to make a, uh, an ebony egg. I've made some ebony, uh, ebony fretboards, of course, many. Uh, ebony is actually my favorite fretboard material. Ebony as a whole neck, I, I, um, I'm obviously looking at wood supplies all the time and getting a piece of ebony that big, uh, I, yeah, it'd be difficult. Um, I guess you could do something with laminates or something, but it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it would probably feel really nice. Um, I think carving it would suck. I think it's really splintery. Like it, it, it likes to kind of, um, if you, uh, uh, if you hit ebony with a chisel, it, it can crack really, really easily. Mm -hmm. um, so carving an ebony neck wouldn't be so fun, but uh, it, it, I think it would feel really good. But yeah, guitar, like wood I haven't used, I'd like to use a, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, just like a, a big chunk of maple, making a, roasting it, making a hollow, making a wafer out of that, that'd be pretty cool. Um, what else? Uh, uh, maybe rosewood? It could, could be cool to do that. I've made a few rosewood necks and fretboards, of course, but I haven't ever made a rosewood body. Um, but, yeah, also, maybe, yeah, maybe not, but um, but yeah, no, I I think with woods, uh, I I'm kind of lucky in that I, I use a lot, you know, a lot of different woods. So for example, here I have um, what's this? I have a this is babinga. I have a babinga body, a few babinga bodies actually, kind of in in the shop. Uh, and behind me, I have a, a roasted walnut body, a, a raw walnut body. Uh, some mahogany, I've got some ash in here, so, and I also have a wood stock in the house, because um, it's very, it's easier to control the, the temperature and the humidity inside the house than it is in my workshop. Um, and I have, it's, it's, it's really, really varied. Um, I have a few, I think I have a roasted babinga offset uh, on the waiting list, and that I'm excited about. I haven't roasted babinga yet. Um, but I'm kind of lucky. I think most most woods that I would like to to work with, I have a uh, I've had my hands on, and uh, yeah, maybe some like I mean, it, just for the sake of like, seeing how it feels, some really kind of terrible for the environment, very very old rosewood. But I don't think I'm ever going to uh, work on any kind of old growth uh, uh, rosewood because yeah, there's all the the Brazilian stuff. I think I'm probably never going to work with that. But it would be nice maybe to go back in time and when there's plenty of it and have some rosewood and, and work with it. How do I roast my own timber? I have, um, uh, I actually kind of built, uh, and basically I bought a few ovens, I took them apart and then I made a brick uh, kind of enclosure uh, with, uh, with some glass and it, it's pretty ghetto, but it it's, uh, has controlled ventilation, controlled humidity of course, and uh, I put uh, wood in for a really, really long time on a very, very low, um, I'll come to that, on a very, very low temperature for a really long time. Um, I have a, and the brick kind of gets hot and that keeps it really, really warm for a long time. And then actually what I will do is I'll, I will roast um, wood in, in a few different kind of stages. I won't just do one batch on a hot heat for a really, really long time. Hey, so um, I will uh, do it. Uh, so I actually just roasted some, some walnut a few days ago or I've been roasting walnut over the past few weeks where I will put it in, in like a body and I'll leave it in the oven for like a day on a, like daylight hours, I can say, because I, I, uh, my workshop's solar powered. So I, I try to not have too much on at nighttime. So when the, um, when the sun comes up, I'll put the oven on and, you know, maybe an hour later, I put the oven on and then the walnut will be in there. And then I'll let it cool and then I'll plane it, I'll flat it again after it's been, you know, in the oven for a day, I'll take it out, I'll make sure it's totally level again because wood can kind of move around a little bit when you've roasted it. So plane it down, get it flat, make sure it's good. You lose a little bit of material, but not so much. Um, I always order my material a little bit bigger than it needs to be because it's better to have a little bit more. Roast it again, again on a very low heat and this way kind of gradually doing it, um, gradually doing it, uh, really uh, improves the stability of it. I think if you, I've done it before on a test where I've really cranked uh, some maple in an oven, in my oven, and uh, if you put too much heat into the wood at, at once, it, it can kind of crack and it, uh, it can really warp and uh, that's obviously not a very good thing. 
So yeah, kind of gentle heat over a really long period of time, sucking the moisture out of the oven. Um, it's actually quite simple. I mean, I, I bought two uh, two electric ovens. Uh, they were not expensive. They were like, I don't know, like $100 or whatever your equivalent is. Took them apart, built some brick thing, insulated it, and it was it was, it was was pretty straightforward. Um, any, uh, but how is the self-sustaining thing coming along? Been able to plant much yet? Yeah, I've planted. So for those that don't know, um, I am uh, uh, making the steps to being as kind of uh, sustainable as possible, as kind of boring as that sounds, and you know, as a uh, socks and sandals as as that sounds. Um, I uh, it doesn't really feel right to not be thinking like that. I don't know, like, but at the same time, I don't really want to make a big deal about it because I think everybody should be doing it anyway, and I don't like like it's not, for example, a selling point of my guitars so much. But yeah, my workshop is solar powered. Um, I am making more energy than I'm using, and I'm sending it back to the grid. So um, you know. Uh, even though this Babinga and uh, this Ebony is, you know, has come from 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 afar, the carbon's been offset by by the energy that I that I'm producing. But yeah, I also have a uh, have a big field of a few acres of land, and I am planting uh, trees that are uh, kind of local to here. Uh, I don't really want to plant as tempting as it is to you know try planting rosewood or wenge or something in Denmark. I don't really want to want to do that because I don't want to fuck up the ecosystem and uh, it's not right. But uh, luckily, where I am, uh, actually maple, uh, European maple and ash grows like weeds. I mean, literally it grows like weeds. Um, so I actually don't have to do that much work. Uh, what I do is in my garden, um, I have a little garden and a big field. Um, uh, my garden is lined with sycamore and, you know, ma ma European maple and ash trees. And when they're little, you know, or, you know, yay big, I dig up the tree and I put it in my field. And uh, yeah, they kind of, they kind of yeah, it means I don't have to buy anything, and, uh, which is obviously good. I mean, I'm not, you know, putting a tree that's not uh, good for the region, which is also pretty good. And they're quite quick growing. I mean, um, I think the first of the maples I can uh, start chopping down in maybe six, seven years time. And obviously, that's a really long time to be thinking about, uh, about, about my wood, because then after a few more years, so it'd be about a decade before I can start using it. But I'm kind of okay with that. And uh, if something goes, you know, my life changes direction and uh, I start making carbon fiber guitars or aluminium guitars or something, I am okay with having planted a shitload of trees and not using them um, because that's pretty cool. Um, I also actually have, I have a bunch of, uh, a bunch, I have five sheep and 14 chickens. And I'm trying to figure out if I can maybe use uh, uh, maybe the, the the wool from the sheep in uh, in, in uh, straps or something, or maybe I was thinking about doing um, uh, grinding up the the eggshells from the chickens and doing like inlays with a uh, with chicken egg shell, but um, it, yeah, it, it might not look so cool. So it's the the but the the main thing actually with this kind of the sustainability thing is uh, is my energy usage and I um yeah I, I'm, I'm I'm kind of not yeah I'm not costing anything. So when you get a guitar, they have no kind of, um, there's no bad vibes, you know, like I, I'm not uh, in, a, in a factory in, in somewhere. Um, uh, you know, I'm in my own little personal factory in, in you know, in the middle of nowhere in Denmark. But I, uh, I you know, there's no bad labor laws and uh, the, do, do you know what I mean? That you don't have to have a bad conscience whilst uh, buying one of my guitars. But uh, Al asked something interesting. What did he ask? Uh, it would be cool to see me do a multi-laminated body plywood style using a favorite woods. Yeah, that would be really, really cool, wouldn't it? Um, it reminds me a little bit of like a like a Prisma, um, like a uh, you know if you don't know Prisma guitars, he makes guitars from skateboards. And skateboards are a, a laminated maple, um, and often they have uh, some dyed wood because it looks pretty cool. So on Prisma guitars, you'll see like uh, when he's carved the, the the top of he has like a um, kind of like a like like a three three five inspired guitar, but with quite sharp horns. It looks it looks pretty cool. Um, he actually works with McNelly, talking of McNelly earlier. Um, anyway, on his carved tops, you can see the, um, the 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 maple laminates of like obviously you know maple and then like blue maple, maple, red maple, etc. And that looks really really cool. Um, yeah, there's a few kind of things I've seen of of people making. Uh, Guitars from a big lump of plywood, basically, and as you carve, 
he get all the all the you know the lines of the ply become uh, become obvious. I think it could be cool. I mean, it's like uh, I think if somebody commissioned it, I would I would think about it. And um, I think the processing time of making that piece of laminate would be a while. And at the moment, I'm um, yeah. But it's it would be cool. Maybe one day. I think if I was going to do something like that. Like, like a, you know, if I was going to do something for fun, that was, you know, it's all fun. But if I'm going to do something for fun that was not a commission, I think maybe I'd want to work with uh, with metal or something. It could be really fun to uh, to get a welder out. And I'd like to make, like, a one-piece uh, metal guitar. But uh, that that's a little while away. Have I made an acoustic guitar? Well, I kind of think that, like, most of my guitars are have acoustic properties. And, <laughs> and I like to... Um, one of the things I try to do with my electrics is that they feel as kind of resonant and vibrant as possible. So, you know, I roast a lot of the wood, it's all super dry. Um, the neck joints are made in a way so that uh, there's a lot of energy transfer between the, the neck and the body. So you can kind of, you know, tap the headstock and, and, and the, the, the body will, you know, the lower body will, will vibrate as well. And that's, uh, so I, I like to think of them all a little bit as, as kind of, acoustics but without sound holes but of course my my wayfares some of them are very acoustic i control the the thickness of the top and the back um depending on how so they're they're all totally hollow <coughs> it's not covid uh they're all totally hollow uh but if somebody is playing you know really loud rock or uh on a big stage um or you know if there's like a jazzer playing in his bedroom they need very different feedback control. Um, somebody, of course, playing on loud stages needs to have as little feedback as possible. So what I will do is I'll put a bit more material on the guitar's top and uh, maybe the guitar's back just so that they uh, it, it can kind of control feedback and uh, in reverse, um, uh, in reverse on a uh, guy who wants as much resonance as possible, I'll make it as thin as possible and then the whole thing really, really vibrates. So anyway, but you're thinking of like a Western guitar. No, I've never made a Western guitar um, or like a, a nylon string. Um, I would really, really like to. <clears throat> I had a good moment actually last year. I had an apprentice and he came uh, to me with a, uh, and it was uh, an acoustic guitar that was made by, it's actually made by Gibson, but had National on the headstock. And it was from 1952 or something, or 1953. And, um, it was incredible. Like uh, I, I, uh, I played it. I actually plugged it into my my, my pedal board. I plugged it. It had a really nice preamp in it, and um, it just sounded amazing. And uh, I was really confused for a few days afterwards because this acoustic guitar was like you know plugged in into my you know pedal board with a you know really lovely fuzz face and a great you know Germanian boosts and everything. It sounded amazing. And uh, I thought like it was like the best tone I think I've ever had. And uh, it was on a, a Gibson made national branded acoustic guitar. So I would I would love to start making acoustics. Um, it is definitely on the uh, on the menu for one day. I've come very close a few times with guys wanting to uh, wanting to um, oh sleep well Al enjoy anytime. And uh, yeah, I came very close to somebody ordering a um, uh, an acoustic guitar from me uh, about a year ago. Um, and we had agreed a price and he knew that I hadn't made one before, but he really liked my guitars and he wanted like my version of an acoustic guitar. And we kind of agreed on the specs and we agreed the price. We agreed, uh, everything. And then I think he got sick or something and he, um, and unfortunately in some parts of the world, if you get sick, it's really expensive. And, uh, so then, yeah, he had to pull out. Um, it will happen one day and I am, uh, I'm, you know, I'm fresh for it. Um, and of course, it would be a little bit cheaper because I haven't done one before. That was reflecting the price I made with this guy. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll happen one day. If it doesn't happen uh, from a commission, maybe I'll do it as a kid. And uh, what is the next questions to answer? I have, ba ba da ba ba. Uh, da, 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 da. I've answered that. I've answered that. So then I have a few more questions from. Um, uh, that I got uh, in in my DMs, and that was uh, yeah the 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 economics of running a, a guitar business, and that is is really really dull. <laughs> but it's a uh, it sounds like it's it's kind of funny because of course guitars are um, you know when you go to like really really small scale, and I am just about as small scale as as, as it's possible to be. 
With small scale production, everything is a bit more expensive, of course. Um, and uh, I have my, my workshop costs and my hardware. I mean, it, it does make sense for me to make a really nice guitar and put crap hardware in it. Um, so yeah, my guitars, to, to some people, I think they, it, it, it sounds like they may be a bit expensive. Um, but if you think it's like a month, often a minimum of, of a month of my, of my, uh, my time, and then the material costs, and then you know, paying the loan for, for the workshop, um, I, I, I don't earn a good hourly wage on, on each guitar that I make, but it's a lot of fun. But the economics, basically, if you want to um, start your own guitar business, uh, that's a good question, and I'll come to that in a minute. Um, if you want to start your own guitar business, my, my tip is to start off um, as small as possible. Uh, I, uh, my first guitars were made with a jigsaw and um, a stick saw and a little hand router and a drill, I think that was everything. Oh, and, and, and I did, I think I might have done all the sanding by hand. And to be honest, with a, with a router and some good router templates, and, uh, oh nice, um, router, good router templates, a drill, you need a drill, and I think you probably need a jigsaw. Um, although you could, you could you could cut it by hand. With that, you can make a great guitar. Um, and then there's some fretting tools, of course. Um, so then it grows a little bit. But basically, um, my, my advice, if you want to start your own guitar business, economically speaking, is invest as little as possible at the very, very start. And then each guitar that you make, um, put all the money into, into tooling. That's what I did for the first few years. I, uh, I was teaching um, guitar. Uh, I used to be a full-time guitar teacher. So when I was transitioning from being a, a guitar teacher to guitar builder, um, I wasn't earning any money from more guitars. I only started taking a salary actually from more guitars about a year and a half ago. Um, before that, everything was going back into tooling. So now I have, you know, I have pickup mining machines and I have uh, some pretty big machinery and uh, I have a CNC machine, a small CNC machine that I don't use very much. Uh, many sanding machines and uh, I would... Yeah, I, I, th that's basically my advice. Try to sell a few guitars and invest everything back into tooling. But have I ever put an effects pedal inside a uh, an instrument? Yeah, I have. I have. I made a um, a crazy uh, kind of uh, Strat type guitar. Um, actually, I made it almost two years ago, but it was kind of a very long story because uh, I finished it just when COVID kind of became very serious at the start of last year. Um, and the, the 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 client that commissioned it needed some time uh, to get money together because I think he, his employment got a bit strange. Uh, so I kind of sat on this guitar for, for about a year, actually. It was finished, and uh, it was a commission. The guitar had his name on it, so I couldn't sell it to anybody else. Um, but he hadn't paid me. So I had this um, this uh, this kind of strat in my, uh, in my in my workshop. For First of all, I had to make it, and that took, you know, quite a long time because it... It did have a hand wired effect. Uh, I, I've made a few effects, um, and it had his it, it, an inlay on the fretboard of his name, and uh, so it was quite an involved guitar. And then uh, I finished it. I, I said, "Hey, you know, it's time to pay me now." And uh, he said, "Yeah, sure." And then COVID happened, and uh, he needed some time. So that's the story of that guitar. But it basically had a. Um, uh, I. Uh, I still am interested in it, but I was thinking a lot um, maybe three, four years ago about making kind of my own drive pedal. Um, I'm not so horny on the idea anymore because there's so many good ones and I'm very, very busy with what I'm doing. But at the time, um, yeah, I made, it's kind of, you know, my take on a Tube Screamer, but it, no, but it, but it, but it was. Uh, it, was made, it was a Strat, so I thought it'd be really good. He was also a really big Steve Ray Vaughan kind of guy. Uh, good, good, good blues guitarist, actually. Uh, the, he, the guy that got the guitar, and uh, yeah, it had a basically a, a true screamer with a lot more clean uh, headroom, uh, kind of built into it. And it sounded great. Um, and then I think if I was to do it again, I would want to have just a one knob um, uh, kind of effect, so like a, like a fuzz, as you say. I think this year, this yeah, I'm making a roasted babinga offset, and I think it's getting a. a a very uh, powerful volume boost um, built in uh, with like a push pull pot, so it should look pretty um, kind of pretty hidden. Um, I think it'd be fun to put like tremolo or something into a guitar. Um, it's tricky, yeah. I, but I think I think fuzz is probably the right thing. Like a really good fuzz face, it cleans up really well. Um, is is probably the right the right thing. And then speaking of pedals, what do I have on my board right now? Uh, my board is uh, it, it doesn't get so much love. Um, 
but I have some some really good stuff on it. Uh, I have a, a uncle a amplification in Gibsonville. Um, he's kind of a we're kind of you know business friends, and uh, he has one of my guitars, and I have one of his amps, and I have uh, an amazing kind of reverb uh, drive pedal. It's, it's like a, a valve powered reverb pedal, so it has a, a, a reverb chip. Um, and the tube uh, connected to, to, the, to the chip somehow. I don't know. I'm not a pedal builder. And uh, that adds... You kind of actually only need that on the board because it creates a bit of space. And it... Uh, oh, of course. Um, it creates a bit of space. And also it, it adds a lot of kind of tube warmth. And so I have that always on my board. And I have a um, uh, Espresso Effects uh, Germanium Boost always on my board. And it has this really cool thing where you can... Uh, you can kind of control which EQ it's it's boosting, so you can kind of plug anything into it, and uh, oh yeah, and you can kind of switch where in the EQ range you're, you're you're boosting, and also it kind of works as a cut as well somehow. So you can kind of plug anything into that, and it will sound good. I've had guitars. Um, I, I do something where people come to me with 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 their own guitars and with kind of crap tone. They all say it's crap tone. And uh, I will uh, give them some kind of, I'll help them out. You know, maybe I'll adjust their pickups or something or tell, talk about their pedal board. This Germanium um, Boost by Espresso Effects, it can kind of, if you have a guitar that's humming an awful lot or a guitar where the tone is a bit crap, you can kind of, you can kind of dial it in mm-hmm. so it'll all sound good. So yeah, that is always on my board. And also a, uh, a fuzz face from Charlie Effects. I think it's in Nottingham in the UK. That's always on. So they're, they're my three that are constantly there. Um, Charlie Effects fuzz face. And uh, Espresso FX Germanium Boost and an Uncle uh, Amplification. I think it's called the Space Ape Reverb. It is called the Space Ape Reverb. And then in between there, like, I'll, I might add a delay. I have a few uh, nice delays. Um, but yeah, I don't do so much guitar playing because I'm building all the time. What's my typical finish in um, uh, in my guitars? It's, it's a kind of a long, slow process. Um, but it's... Uh, I have experimented a lot with different oils and uh, kind of fin- finishing waxes, um, and it's basically a kind of a, a, a blend of um, a few different oils. Some oils are really good at penetrating into wood deeply, but they might not be good at getting a you know nice polish. Whereas some woods, some oils are very good at polishing but don't penetrate very much. So what I'll do is I'll there's like a blend where I'll use some uh, oils that uh, early on in the finishing process uh, that go deep into the wood, and then uh, you know gradually different oils as I want to penetrate less, but maybe have more color or more protection. And then some wax, uh, I use a few different waxes. So there, I think there's uh, four or five different oils uh, all my guitars get uh, a few coats on. So there's maybe, yeah, two or three coats of each oil. Each coat takes a day to dry. Um, two or three coats per oil, and there's four or five. So it takes about two weeks of uh, being on a little bit of oil, and then maybe buffing it back a little bit, and then a bit more oil, buffing it back a little bit. And then uh, after all that, um, I, uh, I uh, buff it, buff it, and then I and then I wax it. Um, also with one or two different waxes, and then maybe a uh, like like some some lemon oil on top of all of it to give it some nice smell. But it's um, they get really really smooth, and uh, you can kind of see I guess on uh, on, the, on the photographs that the uh, the guitars get um, they get really smooth to the touch. And uh, there's a nice kind of sheen I'm looking for. I don't want this kind of plasticky, um, you know totally mirror finish you know if you get like a, a, a guitar with like a poly finish and, and you can kind of do that with it and it's just so shiny um, that's not really my thing you can kind of see how thick it is uh, with my guitars you can see that the finish is, is you know almost not there and how thin it is but it's uh, it's just shiny enough to kind of catch the light um, so it does you know have some sheen and some protection for the wood but not uh, not enough to kind of kind of getting in the way of the sound. That's actually another thing, or the reason why I use this type of finish is actually for the sound. You know, the the thicker the on guitars, you know, I'm making electrics with the viewpoint of the being almost like acoustics. I want them to be resonant and, uh, you know, interesting and exciting to play acoustically, even though they are electric. Um, coating that in plastic, or, you know, poly, or even nitro doesn't really make that much sense to me. You know, if you were a violin builder and you happen to make a solid violin, um, and you coated it in, in poly, then you'd be laughed out of the violin making shop. Um, and I don't like. I understand because it's really good protection. 
why poly is great, but it's um, on a guitar that you want to be acoustically interesting, I think coating in plastic makes no sense. So that's actually the, 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 the ethos behind my finishing process, is just to keep the wood as vibrant as possible, and also so the wood can age. Um, you know, guitars that have been played in an awful lot, uh, they, they sound better, they, they, they resonate more, you know, and, uh, oh, enjoy Soph, have a good dinner. And uh, they, um, yeah, so I, I like the finish to be as thin as possible and uh, so the wood can still breathe, the wood can dry out naturally over the years. Whereas, you know, coating a, a piece of wood in plastic, it, it will always be exactly the same. It will never get better. It will never get worse. Um, that's one thing in that uh, frets you know, or guitars finish the way that, that I finish my guitars. You're more likely to get a bit of fret sprout the first maybe year um, because the, the wood can move. Um, Whereas on a guitar that's totally coated in plastic, it's like mummified. Um, now that means that, of course, six months down, maybe one year down the line of having one of my guitars, you you will need to touch the frets maybe on just just the fret ends as the uh, the neck dries out. But it's kind of um, it's just part of it when you have a, a, a guitar that is is, is aging properly and uh, it sounds better anyway. So people don't really mind so much about that. But I have time to, I think, answer one more question, and that was uh, on, it's a DM I've just gotten, and what is this? Um, yeah, advice for a first time uh, guitar builder, just do it. Grab um, some cheap tools, don't spend a ton of money on tools, you can spend so much money, like go, there's like a tool for everything, and you don't need most of them. Uh, you need a drill, you absolutely need a drill, and I would say you absolutely need a router and uh, at least a neck pocket and neck, like a strat neck pocket and strat neck heel uh, template because then they have to fit. Um, I think you kind of need that. And then uh, hack away a piece of wood. Oh, add some chisels and some knives if you can. So buy as many cheap tools as you can and uh, maybe start off with a, with a pre-bought neck so you don't have to worry about the, the trust rod channel. That's a bit of a faff the first time you do it. But um, yeah, buy cheap tools, get some scrap wood, and just make some cuts. Um, so people are asking for, for kind of permission to, to make their, their first guitar. Just do it. It's, uh, you know, the first one's gonna suck. The second one's gonna suck too. You know, uh, my first guitar didn't even get finished, it sucked so bad. So I think don't, uh, don't expect perfection. You know, um, there's that thing, you know, uh, perfect is the enemy of good. Uh, if you're a perfectionist, um, you know, I, I, I strive for, for, for perfection, but it's, uh, don't, don't let your perfectionism get in the way of, of, of doing something, you know, so like, um, don't expect your first 10 guitars to be that great. And, uh, you just, just, but you need to make them. You have to get them out there. And if you, cause if you don't, then you don't get anywhere, you know, at, at all. Uh, so that's kind of my advice. Make as many guitars as you can and, uh, as cheaply as you can. And uh, if, you, if you can sell any of them, invest all the money into better tooling. So like, uh, yeah, I think actually, I think this Makita drill has lasted the whole of my, the whole of my, uh, you know, of more guitars. And that's pretty good. Uh, the other tools I, I started off with, they all died. Um, I've, I've, I used to go through routers and uh, yeah, never mind. But anyway, that is all I have time. I had to do some work, um, some real work. I had to actually make some guitar stuff. I have three, um, really nice Mortys I'm currently working on. I have a bunch of stuff I'm working on, but right now, I uh, today I'm working on some Mortys. And uh, do you know what? I'll show them to you quickly, because that'd be fun. I'll flip this camera around. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Oh, that's my face. Here we go. So we have, um, this has been uh, roasted. Um, this is uh, some wax that uses grain sealer. This will all go. Uh, roasted walnut, and it's going to have two filtertrons and a wraparound bridge and a reverse headstock Wenge neck. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about all my guitars. This is, um, I carved this yesterday. That was a, um, I carved the top yesterday. I've not carved the back yet. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba! And it's, um, I'm kind of getting Les Paul vibes uh, with this one. Um, but it's uh, got the, the string. Um, String through ferrules, and it's gonna have a. Oh, let me grab the hardware. Ba -ba -da -da -do. It's getting one of these about here, I think. Uh, yeah, in a single neck pickup. It's gonna go across. It's gonna be fantastic. This is getting a, another mahogany neck, and I think an ebony board. It should have an ebony board. Ebony is a correct choice. Ebony is almost always a correct choice. And this is a walnut, uh, non roasted walnut kind of 
traditional, that was my breakfast, a traditional um, uh, kind of tea style. The customer actually wanted it to be a little bit chunky. It's not finished yet, but you can see this is more chunky than my normal work. Uh, and this is getting, I think, yeah, no, I know. It's getting this neck, which I actually glued up yesterday. So I need to, to tidy up the, the ends of this and uh, radiate it properly and uh, stuff. This is a bibinga. So one, two, three. Anyway, have, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, they're not bad, are they, yeah? <laughs> anyway, um, I will see you next time, if you like it. Maybe this is my first time doing it, and I've had a bunch of people say, hey, you should really go live one time. So I've done it now. I've, I've popped my live cherry, and uh, I hope you found it relatively interesting. Uh, thank you for all the questions. I really appreciate it. If you weren't here, then I would be talking to myself, and that would suck. So thank you for being here, and I will, uh, yeah, maybe see you next time. If you enjoy it, then then ask me to do it again. Otherwise, don't. <laughs> Otherwise, say, damn, that really sucked. Um, anyway, I have my tea. I actually didn't, didn't have any of it, but I will see you. Oh. It's cold now. See you later. Bye-bye.